Hi, I'm Ricky Frank. I'd like to be your guide into the amazing world of enameling. In this lesson, we're going to learn how transparent enamel interacts with copper when it's heated so that we can get brilliant clarity with the light bouncing through the glass off the metal surface and back to the viewer. Let's get started. I'm going to have some copper discs and I'm going to explain what happens when we heat copper and how that affects the surface of the metal reflecting light. So to start with, I'm going to take a piece of paper and some flux. Now in the enamel world, flux means colorless glass. It has nothing to do with flux and soldering. So let's not be confused, even though it's the same word. And enamel companies make lots of different types of fluxes. Sometimes they're specific for a metal. Sometimes they melt at different temperatures. So what we're going to do is a little study on different types of fluxes to see how they look different and see how they react with the copper that we're going to work with today. I've got several Thompson unleaded enamel fluxes that we're going to use. And we're going to work with 2015, 2030. This one is 2009 and this one is 2010. So all those numbers are on the 2000s, early 2000s are going to be the fluxes. Let's go ahead and get my dust mask on. And let's just start with the lowest number first. We'll do the 2009. I'm going to put some enamel in my sifter and sift on kind of a medium height, maybe about three grains high. I'm not counting. With experience, you get to know how thick and how thin you can do things. And I'm going to use a propane oxygen mini torch for my firing today. Now the heat source is not that important. You just have to get it hot enough. So a kiln could be used, this torch, an oxyacetylene torch uh, by Smith. Butane will work. You've just got to have the flame hot enough to melt the enamel and to do what we're going to call clearing the enamel, which is part of this lesson. To start with, I'm going to turn on a little bit of the gas, which is the red, and hold it to the igniter and I'll get a little flame. And now I can add some oxygen. And I want my flame to be a little bigger, so I'm going to add some more propane, more oxygen. And what I'm going to do in this firing is to fire the piece until the surface is glossy. So it'll go through our normal firing stages, which are sugar fire, orange peel, to glossy. And then we'll take a look at it. There we see it's starting to get dark. Orange peel went through the, fire, the sugar fire very quickly, and now it's glossy. But it's not very interesting. And what we've got here is the copper oxide that is formed. When we heat copper, and let's go ahead and just do one so we can see what happens when we heat copper without anything on it. And we can just heat this from above because there's no enamel on it. And as the copper is heated, it turns black. And that is copper oxide being created on the surface. Sometimes that will flake off. Sometimes it'll form a skin that can't be removed without some kind of abrasive or uh, pickling. So what we see here on this piece Let's put them side by side. We've got the black showing through. Now that was actually a little bit more fire than I want. So I'm going to do it one more time 
and see if I can heat it up a little slower. So how do I heat it up slower? I either use a smaller flame or I do it from a further distance. That's how I control temperature when I'm working with the torch. So we're going to heat this one up slowly. So I've got a smaller flame and I'm doing it from a little further away. And this gives me more control. And I think on this firing we'll see the stages a little bit better too. Okay, it's starting to get dark and we've got some sugar there, some orange peel. You see how black it looks. There we go. Much more control on that one. Let's give it a few seconds so I don't put my tweezers into some molten enamel and make a little divot. And what we're seeing here is even though the enamel is glossy or close to glossy, the black copper oxides are keeping it from being very reflective. So what we want to do as an enamelist when we're working with copper is a process called clearing the enamel. And when the enamel is heated up either long enough or hot enough, and this is transparent we're talking about, not opaques, then the oxides will actually dissolve into the enamel and disappear. This only happens once. The oxides aren't created on a second or third firing. So once you've got your enamel flux or transparent color cleared, you, sh you don't have to do it again. You do need to fire it hotter to clear it. So if you're going to work with a transparent on copper, you want to get that clearing done first. You don't want to wait to a third or fourth firing when you might be ruining some design work you're doing because you're trying to clear your copper. So let's do this same color one more time and we're going to get it even hotter to see what happens when it goes beyond that. So I am going to do a hotter firing because I want this to clear. I want the oxides to dissolve. So I'm doing a little bigger flame, a hotter flame, and I'm going to get up nice and close. This should go pretty quickly. And what I'm going to be looking for is a nice glow. See how quickly that's going? I'm looking for a nice glow. Oh, there we go. That's great. And what's happened is the oxide has dissolved and we don't see it anymore. And now we've got that bright orange, orangey yellow, coppery glow coming through reflecting the light. So this is great. We've got four different ways of looking at it. This has got the copper, just the copper oxide. And we've got the copper oxide that has not dissolved much at all. And usually flux over copper oxide is going to fire and look reddish orange. And that's exactly how it would look. In fact, I think what we'll do is we'll put some flux over this and see what happens when we fire it. So let's do this one. Now I want to make sure that if there's any loose oxidation here, I'm not putting it over a piece of paper where I've got some flux because it'll flake off and get into the enamel and then it'll be contaminated. So we'll do one more right on here. And this is about the same amount of time I did for clearing it last time. Let's give it a few more seconds to cool. And we've actually got a nice kind of black look and I think as it cools we're going to see more of that red coming out. Sometimes there's almost like a blue luster on the pieces. So 
it's hard to control though. So if I want it to be the final look to have that blue luster, I wouldn't be able to keep adding more colors to it. But right now we can see that the copper oxide didn't dissolve like it did in this one. And we're seeing it. Once we've got that formed on there and it's got a skin, it won't clear again. So you've got to get this done in the beginning. Okay, so that's a little bit about clearing our transparent enamel. And what we used was one flux. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this flux up and we're going to do some samples with some different fluxes to see if they look different or to see if they work differently. So I'm going to put this back in. Let's grab a clean piece of paper. And this one is going to be Let's see, I don't even see the, oh, there we go, 2010, 2010. And I'm doing these enamels straight out of the jar. So this is 80 mesh that is going through a, probably a 40 mesh screen. So all the enamel in this jar is being used, which means they're fine grains, medium sized grains, and large grains. But if it's 80 mesh, that means there's no grains that are larger than 80 mesh. So any 60 grain, a 60 mesh grain that would have been in the uh, production process of making this would have been sifted out before it was sold. Now, you can also see that I'm not being very careful about touching these pieces of copper. These, these have been stamped out from, looks like they're about 24 gauge. I've got my fingers on them, there's grease on them. I'm not pickling them, I'm not scrubbing them, I'm not doing all the things most books tell you to do. And my feeling is, first of all, I know this works, so I don't worry about it. But also, if we just think about it scientifically, the grease is gonna burn away. And if we're trying to keep it nice and shiny, What's the point if it's going to turn black when we heat it? It's going to turn black no matter what we do. So unless there's some skin on there, some black oxide that's already been formed that um, would not then look like this instead of this, then we're ready to go. And there isn't any on this. It's a clean piece of copper, at least in terms of my eye. What we'll do later is look at putting enamel over a piece that's got some oxidation and some bare copper. So what I'm trying to do on these tests is to keep most of the variables the same. I'm using the same setup. I'm using the same thickness of copper disc. I'm using the same size of the copper disc. I'm using the same heat source. I am using the same mesh size because I'm using the same sifter. And I'm trying to sift the same amount on each piece. So the only real variable that I'm changing is the type of enamel. Um, the one thing that we can't tell is how quickly the pieces are heating up because I'm using slightly different amounts of heat. So if we really wanted to do a very specific test on say the melting point or the softening point of these enamels, what we would do is put small samples on a firing screen put them all so that they have approximately the same access to the heat of the kiln so there's not one up here and one back here where the kiln's hotter here than here. And then we could put this in the kiln, pull them out and see if they're all melting at the same temperature. So what we want to use is the scientific method where we, we try to solve a problem, figure out what the problem is, 
come up with an educated guess as to what the variables are, and then try to keep as many of the variables the same and change one. So what am I changing in this? I'm changing the type of enamel, the type of flux. Let's put this down. So we'll put our, this is my 2009. This is my 2010. Grab a clean piece of paper, and we're going to use 2015. This right here is an 8 ounce jar of enamel. This is a 2 ounce jar. The 8 ounce jars are much more cost effective. They're not anywhere near four times the price of the 2 ounce jar. So if there's an enamel that you know you're going to be using a lot of, you definitely want to be getting an 8 ounce jar. Save a lot of money that way. I think I was using a bigger flame before, so I'm going to go back trying to keep that flame variable the same. And it looks like I've got a little black speck in there from somewhere. It might have floated in from the air, so we'll take a look at that when this is finished. It's nice and it's shiny. We can see that copper shining through really well. Let's let it cool just a few more seconds before I touch it. And I think what we're seeing is a little difference in color in that one. So this is still a flux and it is colorless, but it's looking a little different than the first two. Looks a little yellower to me, a little more golden. And this one is 2030. Now they all say the same thing. They all say medium fusing flux or medium fusing clear, but clear is flux. And I'm trying to keep the flame the same so that that's not a different variable that we have to consider. And I'm letting this get hot enough to be clear. I can see that really bright metallic yellow look to the enamel. I'm going to let that cool down a little bit before I touch it with my big hot tweezers. So we've got some interesting results here. We showed how to create the oxide directly on the copper just by heating it. And that's going to happen whenever you heat copper. If you put something like Scalex or Amicote on your copper and coated it, in fact, why don't we just do that right now and see what happens when it's heated. And this will be our final little test in this study.
So let's say I had enamel on the other side and this was gonna be the back side. If we didn't have that on there, it, we know it would turn black because we saw that in the earlier test. So I've got a couple areas where it's bubbled up. So that area should definitely turn black, but let's see what happens to the others. And we'll let that cool. So we can see the, black, the back has turned black. And I know I've got a couple spots that weren't covered well and they've turned black. So while that's cooling, let's talk about what we've done so far. We've got our bare copper disc. We've got our copper disc that was heated, turned black. It's called oxidation or fire scale. And we've coated that with a flux and seen that it turned kind of reddish and orange, which is a very nice color. Then we've got one that wasn't fired hot enough. This is fired directly over the clean copper. And we've got that kind of yellowish where it still some oxides there that's been formed, but it hasn't dissolved completely. Then we have where it dissolved a little bit more. And we've got how it's clear. So different stages. Now over here, what we've done is we've got four different fluxes. And we see that these two are very similar in color. This is very different. This is a little closer to this. This is, might have a little bit more yellow in it, but certainly not as much yellow in it as that. And let's take a look at this. And as we peel this off, we can see that the copper underneath hasn't oxidized yet. Now, if I put this in some water, we can get most of that amicote off. If I wanted to get the rest of this off, I would probably put it in some kind of pickle sparrow solution, and that would clean it up really good. See, the back is black, and we've got some clean copper here. That's the end of this lesson. We've talked about copper, oxidation, flux, and clearing your enamel. Hope you've learned something. For more info, visit riogrande.com or call 800-545-6566. Thanks for watching.